we are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show. We answer that and more. Steve and Jill here. Hi. Welcome to the uh, Land Academy Show, entertaining real estate investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butala. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from the Valley of the Sun. Today, Jill and I talk about the role of research in land investing. And it's not a minor role. Like I said yesterday, we just have a, we're in the information age, literally. And we, there's not a topic I've ever couldn't find any content or reviews on, on the internet about anything to make a really well-informed decision. Let me give you some truth here about Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, do the show first. Here. No, 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 this ties into this. <laughs> give me just a second here. One of the, one of the, the lovely things about our relationship, the yin and the yang One of the here. lovely things. Lovely. No, it is actually, this is a good thing. Not one of the horrific things. No, I'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> so, the lovely things is you are a research nut. You dig in and research like no one I've ever known. And we know what's great about that is I hate research. Can't stand really? it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to... No, I know. Because you hate research. Because well, I'm not. Because I'd rather be off doing something fun. I want to sit and make sure I'm doing the pick the right one. I'm like, eh, pick it. Let's just go. Let's have some wow. fun. No, but you're like, no. We need to look at this. I need to think about that. I need to check this and wait against that. I need to pull these reports, and I need to make sure. So here's my. Here, I'm, this is all ending in a positive. It may not sound like it, but what's great is. No matter what it is, when you finally come to me with something and say, I think we should pull the trigger, I think this is a good idea, I don't have to worry about it. Because I know you put in mm, 10 to 20 times more research than I would have. That's necessary. <laughs> Probably 10 to, 20, 10 to 20 times more. But then I know. Yeah. And welcome to Land Academy. That's like buying property. You know, we, mm -hmm. so I, trust me, I adopt it there and there I do it. I do it quicker. Well, not necessarily. We're both really fast about it. But, you know, I, I know what to look for to pick a property. And if I'm not sure about it, you know, if it needs more research or something, I'm going to, we're going to find out. I'm not going to make a knee jerk decision. So thank you. I'm in a lifelong professional and interpersonal relationship with a salesperson. <laughs> Think about that. What was that for? Send me a note. If you send me an empathetic or sympathetic note. What? <laughs> what was that for? She wants to have fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. She doesn't really care if there's any math or money involved. Nope. Her answer to all money questions is, if it costs more, then it I'll just sell. must be better. And then I'll just sell more. Oh, that too. That's right. No problem. I, I would much rather have this this uh, much larger diamond. Uh -huh. And next month, I'll just sell three times as much and it'll be fine. And the problem with that is, she has a long history of accomplishing that. It works. That's so now, I'm in this impossible position where I just pretty much can't ever say no. Because every time I've ever done it, she just proves me wrong. <laughs> This is a show. You're welcome. Before we get into it, just a good question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Last uh, year, a ton of Land Academy members came to Jill and I needing extra help getting their blind offer campaigns off, off to a good start and in the mail. Yep. So we took a look at that and we took a look at how we personally send out mailers and we used our current staff to get them in the mail. Well, we decided to make that a product called Concierge Mailer, mm -hmm. or Concierge Data as it's called now. Go to Offers to Owners and send, uh, contact them and ask them about con uh, Concierge Data. Hundreds of our members are outsourcing their entire mail effort to make it consistent, like we talked about yesterday, consistent uh, and, and quality and easy. And easy and uh, save you some time. Exactly. Yep. Go to Offers to Owners.com. Okay, Aaron wrote, hi all. So I have a property listed, my first, and it's been on Zillow for 28 days, has about 1,100 views and 70 saves, which I think is pretty good. But I'm a little tempted to lower the price to get a sale. Should I just leave the price as is? Because the marketing seems to be working and people are showing interest, or should I lower the price and get the show on the road? Five, oh, that's, that's uh, something sorry. else. Okay, got it. That's the whoever produced this. 
Uh, just can't I'm, get I'll, it right. I'll talk to the guy. Oh, would you please? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> um, so, you know what's funny about this? Sometimes, sometimes raising the price before you lower price, make sure you're doing it right because sometimes raising the price is even more effective because you might be priced a little too low. You have to really make make sure. I don't think 28 days is necessarily uh, bad. I think you need to you need to check the competition though and see what's the average. I'm assuming because think about it before you mail this area and the zip code. I'm assuming you did the red yellow green test, so you already have a good idea of what the average days on market are. So if you're still in there, I wouldn't be so quick to lower the price. I have a property right now with a broker and he we had a six months listing because that's what i i don't i won't let him do a year we have a six months listing and we're we're month 5.1 or something like that right so we're we're approaching our six month mark and he's like oh shoot i have to hurry up and get this sold now or i'm not going to get my commission so his first answer is hey joe we should lower the price i'm like hold on a moment so i first i entertained it i went all right let me go look at this stuff and i looked around i'm like Oh no, no, we're priced right. Mm -hmm. He's not doing his part. So That's right. Something else missing. So I want you to first, before you lower the price, you're mm -hmm. getting the views. Is it? Is there something missing? Is there some attribute that's not really being showcased? Is it, be, is it being presented correctly? And Are is the it right? Reaching? If there's a broker, yeah. If, if there's a broker, is it that the right person? Is it posted everywhere? Right. Not is it just on social media, and not just Zillow. Mm -hmm. Is it out there? Is it in? You know, I just had a woman the day. It's like, oh my gosh, I've had so much luck. Most of my property sells when I get into these Facebook groups that are local to the area and mm -hmm. or. Uh, you know, whatever the property is, like it's a hunting property. Well, and then I'm putting my Tennessee hunting property in Tennessee Mar Tennessee hunting groups. Gee, you think that might work? Yeah, it does. So there's, there, I think there's something going on that I want you to really look at first. Here's one of the things that I learned about since I met Jill. One of the many, many things. <laughs> and I'm a lifelong, hardcore, seasoned land investor. Enough that we have a show like this with 18 or 1900 episodes. Real estate is cyclical every year. Right now, I mean, when I met Jill, I, I you know, it's a typical guy thing. It's like, what? January is the same as March. March is, uh, you know, the same as November. And when the hell is Labor Day? What is Labor Day? I don't even care. I don't plan anything around that. That's right. Well, I was wrong. Over the years, Jill said, look, the kids are going back to school. We should sell more real estate right after that happens, not before. What the hell are you talking about? Kids are going back to school. And when does that happen anyway? The kids just went back to school. And you had a lull here, Aaron. And I bet it's because of that. Because nobody cares about buying land or buying real estate at oh, all. Summer vacation, yeah. They're all having fun. Next month, whole different story. Everybody's going to get back to their lives. People who buy and sell real estate are going to get back to it. And so I have yeah. really laughed out loud in, in Jill's face at things like this over the years. And here I am. It's 2022. And I'm absolutely telling you, there's huge cycles that go on annually in real estate. We, we uh, If you go back and listen to our podcast years ago, we would always, every uh, holiday time during Christmas and the whole thing, uh, you know, Jill's like, are you kidding me? We sell real estate on Christmas Day all the time because everybody's bored. And, and I said, I, I have historically said, I worried about going out of business because it was so dead between the end of December and the beginning of January. And then January, everybody's back. They sober up and start buying, selling real estate again. So which you. I proved you wrong. Yeah, you're saying. proved me wrong like 19 ways Thank on you. cycles. It's true. Because <laughs> I just, I want everything to be consistent. I'm a regular weirdo male. I want it to all be the same every month. I want it to be consistent every month or go up a little bit. And then I want to, you know, have a couple beers and go to sleep. And I will eat the same thing every day. <laughs> I understand. I know. What the hell is that? To, welcome to my world. <laughs> Today's, today's topic, <laughs> we'll get to you in a minute. The role of research in uh, land investing. This is the meat of the show. As Thank I said, goodness, we finally got to this. Jeez. <laughs> as I said earlier, we just live in this information age, and I couldn't be happier with the amount of data and information that's available. You know, I don't turn, I don't change a light bulb without going onto YouTube to see how other people are doing it to see if I'm doing it right. And the same thing times ten with something as important as buying and selling land. 
And so this day and age, you can tell very quickly whether or not you're interested in buying and selling land as a career. You can tell all, you have all the answers to all of this. You just have to put the time and the research in to figure out. And whatever your question is, should I be buying this piece of land? Well, geez, there's so much accumulated data about what's happening in that little market. And it's all free. <laughs> so the role of research is happily and amazingly infinite when it comes to buying uh, real estate. And the good news is that next week, it's going to be better than it was last week. And five years from now, can you can imagine, imagine the amount of data that we're going to have when wow. we when we reel in a, a, a great piece of real estate and see whether or not how we should price it? Should we buy it? What's going on You know, with the seller? Are mm -hmm. the sellers alive? On and on and on. I, we're, I, we already have a ton of access to data with Land Academy members about chain of title and all kinds of amazing I things. You're right. What, what if there's a way in the future? I'm just thinking ahead. I bet there's going going to be a way that we can uh, you know sadly tie obituaries to properties sure you know you tie and, all that stuff and and see what's going to be passed down to the kids you know i bet there's that's going to happen there's a huge variance right now in yeah. computer users my dad's 83 or something like that and is in, in his 80s and he uses a computer believe it yeah. or not and the internet and the texting and the whole thing he uses it but let me tell you he doesn't use it the way i use it you know yeah. and i'm in my 50s i do not use a computer and a phone the way that our kids do who are in their 20s and when they have children, I'm sure it's going to be very, very different. I can't, I'm sure that if you talk to somebody who's 22 years old, they can't even imagine walking into a store or using a, uh, or ever making any decision without finding out what 500 other people think about it. Right. Or a better price. So we're in this strange. delivered. How does that apply to land? When people get our offers, very often, they are not, they have never used a computer entirely. They'll mail the offer, but sign it and mail it back. True. And so this is a, the heyday. We're in this, this uh, gap between, not the whole world's not on the internet, but in about 10 years they will be, 10 or 15 years. Through attrition, the people that use, don't use the internet are gonna, are, will be removed from the market. They'll pass away, which will make room for, you know, at some point everyone will be, uh, using the internet similarly to the way that we do. You know what that tells me? You need to have your online presence established. We, even even though you said a lot of our members, which is true, a lot of our sellers are not tech savvy, you know, and if you've ever talked to these people, you know what I'm talking about. They don't even know that there's a camera on their phone, that they could sign the offer and take a picture of it. That blows their mind. If they have a phone. Right. So, oh, I guess they're yeah, they may have a phone. No, they're on the landline. So, but, but maybe, but they probably have a cell phone and has, you know, it's big numbers and they don't know there's a camera there. Fast, but there's a lot of people that do. And we, you should have your online presence established. You know, people are going to research you. So I, I think of this show as two things, not just the research we can do and we we complete ourselves picking an area, picking a property, all the great stuff. And you're right. Gosh, it's changed so much even since I got together with you, which feels like just <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all sarcastic today. I'm a little punchy because yeah, we're leaving town. So, but uh, maybe you're gonna leave town. Maybe I'll leave it town. Yeah, one of us is leaving town. Yeah, one or both of us will be leaving town. Yeah, tomorrow morning. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the RVs rolling out. It's your guess maybe who's both in of it. Us might be leaving town in separate directions. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Tune in next week yeah. to buy. A Tune in next week where it's the jail show. <laughs> exactly. There's Jack in the RV. Where's Jill? Uh oh, she's at a spa. <laughs> in Jill's the spa day. And then what? And then how much real estate are you going to buy? None. Exactly. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's good. So anyway. I lost my total train of thought, but that was worth it. So it's just, you know, the research that we do before we do everything that we do. Oh, I was, that's what I was saying. How much things have changed since I even started, man, mapping and parcel fact. And what a dream that has been. I, I love it. 
to what it's going to be in the future is going to be amazing. I did not know, by the way. <laughs> I was using Neighbor Scoop before the merge, and I we, that was not on my phone, and I didn't know Parcel Fact was on our phones the whole time. So I'm like, duh. So now I'm using Parcel Fact on my phone. It's so much easier. Back to the topic. So what's going to happen with this shift? So right now we're in this beautiful variance of people, land, real estate owners that right. um, don't aren't really aware of what potentially could be an incredibly efficient market. Like at some point, just theoretically, the way that stocks were traded a lot of years ago without computers was you'd get on the phone, call your broker and have place an order and the order would get uh, filled sometime that day, if you're lucky, by somebody who's literally in the New York, New York exchange standing out there, you know, flashing what they are willing to pay and and the uh there's a receiver that says yeah i'll sell you that stock for that value so but it's way more efficient now computers have made that incredibly efficient so we're still in those old uh, stock exchange floor days where there's there's this 90 year old seller who and a 22 year old buyer and we're putting a deal together soon It'll be become so efficient that you're trading it on, you know, and there won't be the opportunities that there are now. That's my point. I have one last little nugget that before I'd like to end for me. When I first read the topic here, I was thinking of one awesome thing for anyone who's really new in this area in our space. For me, research equals knowledge equals confidence. Yeah, that's good. So, Lisa, confidence. yeah, so the more you research your areas and you get to know them before you're mailing them, as you're mailing them, while you're talking to people, think about all the knowledge that you're gaining from the research. Like, oh, I didn't know that's moving in over there. I didn't know that. Not only learning where to send mail, but I'm really learning this area. And all of that is going to make you more confident and a better investor. Thank you. Happy to join us today. Five days a week, you can find us here on the Land Academy Show. Tomorrow's a Jack Thursday, and I'm going to talk about why I killed several land deals that my partners already approved. Surprise, surprise. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Definitely. I know it's not It's not me. It's, <laughs> I'm willing to bet it's not me, because sometimes I kill. I think I'm the worst lately. What do you think? About killing deals? Uh-huh. Yeah, I you think can, I'm the pickiest You are now. a deal killer lately. I really am a deal killer. I'm a buzz kill and a deal kill. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Not a buzz kill. <laughs> hey, thanks for tuning in. We would love to connect with you on Clubhouse. Join Jack and I every other Thursday. So not this Thursday, not tomorrow, but next Thursday we'll be there. We're on the first and third Thursday of the month at noon Pacific time in the Land Investing Club. It's pretty darn fun. Check it out. We, we are Jack, Jack and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration. To buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 